Welcome to the first video in CADPOINT's Residential House Design Series. In this video we will be creating a conceptual model with the aim in this video to generate our 2D plans. We start here on our site plan with our topo surface already loaded in and the outline of our building. So if we move into our ground floor plan and I select the wall command, I'm going to make sure I've got the concept wall 300 selected. I want the height of this wall to go up to the eaves level. I want to be drawing on the external face. So if I select pick line tool and zoom in, if I hover over this line and press the tab button that will select the chain of lines and there we have our outline of our building now as a wall. Now if we could just quickly show you that in 3D view we've automatically got that in there. Moving back into the ground floor plan I'm just going to place our double doors at the rear of the building. I'm just going to place that in approximately there for now. Move up to the door and now place that in there like so. I'm now going to move up to the home tab again and select windows and select the concept plane single and just place that in again anywhere for now and I'll use the listing dimension shortly to move these around. Move up to the concept plane double and I'm just going to place that in anywhere for now. Now what I can do here, I can use these listing dimensions to move these around. So for instance, if I wanted this to be 950 away from the outside wall, I can move that around like so. And the same for these. If I want these to be 1400 from the outside wall, I can just simply 1400. 1400. You can also use the dimension tool and equal constraints button to move the window into the center of that wall there. I can quickly move up and do the same with the first floor. As you can see when I move up to the first floor we already have our wall in because that's going up to the eaves level. I'm now I'm going to start to add my windows to the first floor. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to place these on the external wall again anywhere and select the single windows and place these anywhere also. And the reason I'm not taking care over these, I want these to align to the windows below. So if I come here I can press the tab button and I'm selecting the middle points and what I'm doing here is locking those and selecting the midpoints I can lock these out like so and I can also lock doors and window midpoints also and finally now what locking constraints does is if we move into an elevation for instance a south elevation and I move one of these windows here and I choose to move this window it'll also move the window above I can undo that by Control Z and quickly show you what we've now got in 3D so there we have our rough 3D model which we can move around or move to certain views of our model now back into the ground floor plan I'm going to move in and create our internal walls and I'm going to select our concept 100 wall. The reason I'm using concept here is that I haven't applied any materials to these walls or structure and that will basically just give us a concept model at the end which we could then take as a concept model to our client. I'm just going to place these walls in there like so. And again using listing dimensions I can quickly move these walls around if I haven't quite got the dimensions I was hoping for. So if I wanted to offset this say by 300 I could do that like so. And obviously we can come in here and choose our internal doors now or say a 910 door here. I'll just put an internal double door in here like so. Moving up to the first floor now moving into our walls. We want the height to go up to the eaves. I'm just going to draw these in here like so. And 
and again I'm not overly concerned of where I place these because I can use the listing dimensions, those blue dimensions, to move those around. when I've finished. Okay, so for instance, I would like this to be 2.1 meters out, and this here to be 2,500, needs to be 2,000 here, and 1,400. What I will do here also is move into the modify, and I'm gonna just trim these walls out like so. And there we have our basic layout for our upstairs. So again I can quickly come in and add some doors, internal doors, base bar to flip the orientation. Okay so while I'm on the first floor I can come in and I can place our actual floor in and simply come over to the floor properties and choose the the timber suspended floor. Click OK. Click pick walls. The tab button. Tab button again. And that selects those walls there. We're gonna then gonna unpick these wall these lines here and we're gonna trim those in. Okay we're gonna finish the floor and we'll say yes and yes again and now you'll be able to see we've got a first floor placed in. What I am now going to do, I'm going to select that and I'm going to copy. I'm going to move into our ground floor plan. I'm going to paste aligned to the current view. And that's just made a copy of our first floor but on the ground floor. And what I can do here now, I can quickly come up here and change that to a beam and block suspended ground floor. I'm going to move back into our home tab and, and create my stairs. First thing I'm going to need to do is going to change the stair properties to be my private stair. I'll move up to the run and I'm going to draw stairs leaving me three rises remaining. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to activate the dimensions and change that to be one metre away from the wall. What I want to do here is rotate this riser. by 10 degrees. Then what I want to do is rotate this riser again, but this time create a copy of it and by minus 35 degrees. And the same once more, create a copy by minus 35 degrees. What you'll notice I've got one riser remaining. So if I move into the boundary, I can draw 250. I move into the riser. And as you can see there I've got quite a complex stair with a winder and because I know my properties I've set those to be building regs compliant. Now the last thing to do would be to move that in there like so. I'm just going to change the railing type to be the residential timber newel and go OK. We'll finish the stair and there we have our finished stair. So what we're going to do now is move up into the first floor plan and as you can see the stairs haven't actually cut the first floor yet so we're going to move in, we're going to edit the first floor. What we're going to do here, we're going to pick some lines and we'll just pull this line here up to there and we'll trim this in, like so. Make sure that's trimmed in there. And we'll finish the floor. And that's now cut an opening for our stairs in there on the first floor. And there we have our finished first floor plan and our finished ground floor plan as a concept model. That brings to an end the first video in the series. In our next video, we'll be looking at how Revit can be used easily to create the 3D concept model.